What's up guys, this is Sim with Vengeance and I'm back here with another NCAA Football 14 UAB Blazers Dynasty and today your 11-0 UAB Blazers are at home for the regular season finale against the Ole Miss Rebels. They are 5-5 five five, looking to go bowl eligible and we're looking to stay number one and possibly go to a national championship. So if you guys are excited for today's video, make sure you guys drop a like. And if you're new to the channel at all, hit that subscribe button down below for more content like this. I try to put this out as much as I can. I try to upload daily. That's the goal. That's the mission to bring you guys amazing content on a daily. So here we go. Taking a look at the recruiting once again. And you got a lot of good athletes coming to UAB next year. We got a 77 overall strong safety coming to UAB next year. And we also have a 76 corner. This is going to be one of the best draft or the best recruiting classes we think we've ever had at UAB and that's saying something compared to what we've had in the past where we've had Justin Kelly we're also getting an, another strong safety at 75 overall so we may have to switch some positions around and see where we can fit in some certain players we're looking at a 73 overall free safety as well so like I said a lot of moving pieces are going to be coming around uh, some guys may not be playing strong safety some players may not be playing their uh desired positions but I want them to get playing time because I know they have potential so that's the whole thing behind why you know some guy like Larry Wynn who's a 75 and then you got the 77 overall corner uh, you know you never know it's just something that you have to play around with so take a look at the standings the rankings uh, we are number one with 39 first place votes Texas right behind us at number two with 21 first place votes they're taking on Iowa State this week should be an easy win for them should be anyway. Uh, Boise State at number three. You got other notables in there like LSU and Alabama right next to each other at number six and seven. Uh, you got like um, Marshall still in there. Central Michigan's now in there still back in the top 25 after they dropped a couple uh, of games. Uh, West Virginia back in there at 23. And Indiana still in there at number 25 after they lost to Michigan last week at number when they were number 13. So tough losses for Indiana they had a pretty good stretch not gonna lie uh, but you know it's nice to see different teams in there so anyway take a look at the conference standings now and a win would pretty much guarantee us well we pretty much have the SEC title uh, well the title game in our hands even if we do lose I think we still have it so uh, it's all a matter of if South Carolina can come out on top, it looks like right now we're going to face South Carolina. We have an outside chance to face Florida, but don't hold your breath. Uh, there's got to be a lot of things that go on for that to happen. So it's either going to be South Carolina or Florida. Bet on South Carolina. Take a look at the Heisman race. Of course, Justin Kelly is on top of that list. And we look for him to finish off his Heisman campaign with a solid game today. And uh, like I said, uh, one step closer. We're getting really close to our national championship. We're going to take a look at the bowl projections now. And right now, as it stands, we're on pace to face number two, Texas, unless Texas or UAB loses within the next coming weeks. Should be a good game, though. I will see you guys on the field. And uh, Ole Miss versus number one UAB coming your way. Glad to have you with us in the studio. I'm Reese Davis, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. The Blazers are ranked number one in the nation, but there's a big difference in being ranked number one now and being ranked number one early in the season. Early in the season, you have a little bit of a stumble. You figure everybody else is too, and you've got a chance to get back in the fight. Too late for that now. No margin for error, no room for misstep if you want to finish on top. That's going to do it for us here on the pregame show. NCAA Football 14 action coming at you right now. Fred Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit. Field once again as the number one UAB Blazers are taking on the Ole Miss Rebels. 
formerly known as Eli Manning's team. But you also guys probably remember uh, the blind side, of course. You had Michael Orr. You got a few good players coming out of Ole Miss. And you also had <laughs> Julio Jones coming out of UAB. You also had Joe Webb. Remember him? Remember when he started that Thursday night game and back in when he was playing for the Vikings or whatever? And, uh, yeah, there's a couple of UAB players that went to the NFL. But not as many as Ole Miss or, like, in Alabama or, like, uh, LSU or whatever. But we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. I think we had one player go to the NFL ever since this uh, dynasty has started. I think it was Chris Jones. If I'm not mistaken, I'll have to look back. But I know we had a couple of NFL players since this dynasty started. And uh, we look to add to that list soon enough because I know Justin Kelly's going to be on that list. We all know Aaron Hicks has got potential to be in the NFL. Uh, we got, you know, Jared Lewis coming out of possibly going to the NFL next season. Um, but anyway, third down and four here. Here's Kelly dropping back to pass, scrambling to his right, getting it underneath the Donald Hill, but he's going nowhere. He actually loses a yard, and that's going to be bringing up fourth down, and the kicking team is going to come out with Adam Green with a kick, and it's good. Almost blocked, actually, so that's that's a good thing that we got it out fast enough. So it's now 3 nothing, UAB. Second down and 11. Here is Fox dropping back to pass. Looks to his left side. It's caught by Rucker. Rucker taken down at the 45-yard line, picking up 19 yards. So Fox in that no huddle offense for Ole Miss could be a problem today, but we got to stop it. Here's first and ten for Fox, dropping back, looking to the right side underneath for Russell. And Russell gets it shoved down. Jared Lewis, why don't you? And picks up 14 yards. So third down and in inches here. Let's see if they can pick up another first down to keep the drive alive. Well, here we go. They got the running back in motion, but the defense, Terrence Savoy, is right there at the point of attack. Good jump good anticipation right Ole there from Terrence Savoy to prevent that to first down so the kick is up it's for up. Ole Miss and it is and good that one was a long field goal attempt that was probably like from 53 54 yards out and it's now tied at three He's here's Kelly ball. dropping back on third and four look at Brian Green go out and get it third down and 11 though we gotta keep that drive alive let's see if Kelly can bring his offense back and see what we could do. Kelly dropped back to pass. Looking over the middle, it's almost picked off. And luckily there, we I mean, we probably could have hit Brian Green down the sideline now that I look at it, but we'll, we'll never know because we, we, uh, we failed to convert that third down. But they did as well. So Brian Fox in the offense for Ole Miss goes back to the sidelines. And now we're back on offense. Toss sweep to the right for Aaron Hicks. He's got the speed, and he's got the first. He gets leveled there, but gets the first. Taking some big hits early on. This is a pretty nitty gritty game going so far. And uh, we're looking to at least break it open. Again. You see Aaron Hicks to the left, the left side gets that first down, down picking up 15 yard yards on the run. And he has nine carries for 47 yards. So later on, third and two. Matt Ford in the game this time, and he's going to take the handoff up the gut. First down, and then he get, tries to get more, but not going to get half, Not going to get much further than that. But we'll take it anyway. Third and five here for uh, UAB as they got Kelly changing up the play. Dropping back to pass. Looking left side. Caught by Donald Hills. Cuts back inside and finds the end zone. Touchdown Blazers. It's now 10 to 3. Nearing halftime. Hopefully we can extend this lead just a little bit more. Fox dropping back to pass. And it's going to go out of bounds. As that is going to be bringing up fourth down. And UAB gets the ball back with plenty of time left on the clock. But here comes Justin Jordan after... Uh, Justin Kelly, uh, 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 I can't even say the name of the quarterback, but uh, Jordan on the play, and uh, let's see what he can do here on second and ten. Let's see, you saw Brian Kelly, not Brian Kelly, Justin Kelly, I'm messing up names all over the place today, damn this illness, but here comes Kelly back in the game as Jordan did his job to get his team down the field, here comes Donald Hills. And that is going to bring up touchdown, a UAB touchdown. Blazers. Justin Kelly continues to be a great quarterback. And uh, now it's 17-3 as we go into the uh, third quarter here. They're nearing the third quarter. But here's third down and three. Let's see if they can get us uh, going on here. I need, to, I need to get my act back together here to begin the second half. Deep breath, Sam. Deep breath. Whew. All right, here we go. They're going to attempt the field goal right here to try and bring it within 11 points. The kick is up, and it is good. 
So they have made some pretty long field goal attempts in this game to at least get on the board. You know, they they haven't been able to get much today. But I mean, they've at least got something. They've got they don't got much, but they got something. But do they have do they have enough though? That's the thing. Do they have enough to get a touchdown in this game? Because so far it's. So what I have seen, it looks like they don't have it. But then again, our defense is too fast, too furious. And we make another third down stop. Here's first and 10 here as Kelly hands it off to Aaron Hicks on the counter. Counter play is working beautifully. Look at that run by Aaron Hicks as he picks up 15 yards on a first down. 13 carries, 70 yards for Aaron Hicks. Third and six. Kelly dropped back to pass, scrambling immediately, throws it off to Doug Nash. And Doug Nash makes a guy miss. Ooh, that juke move. That was nasty. First and ten. Doug Nash, six catches, 108 yards. Second down and two here, handing it off to Aaron Hicks up the gut. Gets enough for the first. Three yards is all he needs. But hey, that's all we need from him as well. So 15 carries, 76 yards now up for him. He's nearing 100 yards, nearing 1,000 yards on the season. But we do miss the third down conversion right there. But as it stands, we are in enemy territory. We're not quite in field goal range, but we're going to go for it. Here on fourth and 11, Kelly drops back to pass, scrambling, trying to find somebody open. It is going to be Brian Green first down, picking up 13 on the play. And that keeps the drive alive. 110 left. This game has been very uh, low scoring. As far as, you know, how we're used to it anyway. We're used to dropping like 40 points. But, hey, I mean, we're getting the job done. That's all that really matters. We're running the ball well. We're passing the ball well. You know, we're doing everything well on offense. So I can't even complain. We get another touchdown right there from Justin Kelly, making it 24-6. Uh, to six. This game is getting a little out of hand. We've pretty much been in control for this entire game outside of, you know, the earlier parts of the game where we're trying to figure them out. But... Other than that, we've been pretty good on offense and on defense. But right there, we give up a big 27-yard run to Spencer Brown. They're going to hurry up to the line here. And with 45 seconds left in the third quarter, they're changing up the play. They're getting ready for a deep pass play, it looks like. So here is Fox dropping back to pass. Throwing it deep. Oh, my God. He's wide open. Touchdown. Ole Miss. 48 yards for Kevin Caldwell. And it's now 24-13. or 24-13. As we're nearing the fourth quarter, that was a big blow to the defense. But hey, uh, we did not come prepared on that one. I'm like, oh my god, he's wide open. But you know what? It happens. It's football. So here we go. Third down and ten here in the fourth quarter. We get this one off to Thurman Knox first down. 16 yards and uh, keeping them chains moving. That's all we need to do now. We need to wind down the clock. You know, kind of separate ourselves from the competition. And the victory shall be ours. So here we go again, first and 10 from the 36-yard uh, line. Here is Kelly dropping back to pass, looking over the middle. It's, guess who it is, Thurman Knox, first down. Inside the red zone now to the 14-yard uh, line. Very next play, first and 10 from the 14. Kelly in the shotgun, trying to get his first down. Trying to back, get this one over the middle. James Hester Jr. down to what the one. The first and goal. Like the one inch line. That's not even fair. You might as well just give it to him. Come on, game. Just give it to him. He hasn't even gotten a touchdown yet this year. Just give it to him. Touchdown, UAB. After the little Kelly scramble. And uh, that one makes it 31 13 here. This one pretty much looking like it's over. They're going to go for a screen pass. And Marcus Lundy's right there for the pick. And that one is going to be taken to the house. 38-13 as UAB looks like they've gained full control. And with about three minutes to go here in the game, they got their no huddle offense going here as they're nearing like they're going to get ready to score. Can they though? Well, who knows? Kelly, or Fox driving back. It's caught, but tip drill interception as John Banks is right there to grab it. As that ends up being a 38-13 UAB victory. We ran the clock out. And 12-0 uh, once again, boys. 12-0 once again. It's nice to see that feeling come back. And we can go into the SEC championship game against either South Carolina or Florida. Like I said, I would put my money on South Carolina because they got the advantage. And uh, they already beat Florida this year, so it looks like we're going to be taking on South Carolina in the SEC championship game. It's going to be good, though. It's going to be real good. It's going to be a good old SEC clash between two high-powered uh, offenses and defenses. So, anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like. 
And if you're new to the channel at all, hit that subscribe button down below for more content like this. But until the SEC Championship game, I'm Sim with Vengeance, and I am out. Peace.